Are there any Apple fans old enough to remember when Mac Mini was originally introduced? So this is a very robust computer, but it's very, very tiny. <laughs> yeah. Matter of fact, let me show you one right now. This is how tiny it is. It has been over 13 years since that original unveiling. And while it's clear that Apple no longer focuses much on Mac Mini, if at all, recommending that Windows switchers just move to an iMac instead, Mac Mini has both obtained and retained a cult following from within the Apple community for a few reasons. It's still the cheapest Mac in Apple's lineup, it makes for an excellent, inexpensive computer and home media server, and it actually finds quite a bit of usage in enterprise. And you should definitely check my video out on the matter if you haven't seen it. But hopefully that helps illustrate how ecstatic Mac Mini fans like myself were to see Apple upgrade this computer for the first time in over four years. In a future video, I'll test thermal performance and benchmark this machine against Apple's own lineup and the general $800-ish dollar PC market. But in this video, I wanted to take Mac Mini apart to see how friendly it is to user serviceability inside because previous Mac Minis, well, they have been. One fun thing I noticed during the unboxing is that if you look inside the little manual pamphlet they include, you'll notice that, hey, look at that. That's an interesting looking display. It looks like an iMac, but it's not an iMac. And the bezels are small. Could that be an Apple Pro display that's coming out in the future? Or did some Apple intern just whip that up in Photoshop? Let me know what you think in the comments below. All right, so I haven't cracked this open yet and neither has anyone else online that I've seen. So let's do this together. And uh, immediately, <laughs> we're already at a crossroads. You see the prior Mac Mini used to have a little dimple here and a little dimple here. And you could just stick your fingers in them and then twist the cover about 10 to 15 degrees and then you could lift it right off. Uh, those are gone, but the chassis seems pretty much the same as the old one. So I'm betting they just got rid of the dimples and if we use a little bit of friction force, can pop that lid right off. Uh, I think, no, that is not budging at all. Now, if you, can you hear this? I don't know if you can hear, but there's a little clicking in there, which is good because that makes me think they didn't glue it in there. I don't think it's adhesive. So we are going to snag our iFixit ProTech toolkit. This video is not sponsored by them, so don't buy this. <laughs> Just kidding, it's an excellent kit and I use it all the time. I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested. But I am going to snag one of these little blue spudgers, which are plastic and very soft. And I'm going to see if I can kind of pry into the cover and do it gently. Oh, that's good news. That's good news. That was a snap and there's another snap. So I was right, this thing basically just comes right off. It's held in by three little plastic retention clips that uh, attach to the three security screws. Yep, those are security screws. So there are Torx screws right here, but they're actually security screws. So they have a little pin in the middle and you have to have the right driver. But unfortunately for Apple, I've got it. <laughs> All right, so we've got all of the screws undone, but I don't want to rip this piece off because this black piece right here is the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module. And so if we just rip this back cover off, we're probably going to break a ribbon cable. So let's see where under here. Yep, there's a cable. And oh, look at that. It's just a little antenna cable. It's attached right there. Just got to pry that up and undo the screw which is the same size, that's nice. And there we go. So that back cover comes straight off. Okay, so we've got some good news and bad news. The good news is that this computer is actually really pretty simple. Air gets sucked in through the bottom of the case into this blower style cooler. So this fan sucks air in and then blows it through this radiator right here, which is presumably aluminum. You can see we've got some copper heat pipes right there that are going underneath the CPU, which looks like it's about right here, right beneath the RAM. And the RAM, kind of oddly and surprisingly, is covered by this aluminum shield. And then other than that, we have the power supply, which is over here, and it looks like it's on a board independent to the main motherboard, which is nice. So if that goes bad, you can swap that out. 
And then there's a speaker underneath here because yes, the Mac mini has a speaker. I don't know why, it sounds horrible. The bad news is, we'll find out in a minute, but the CPU doesn't look socketed. And the RAM, while it does look like it can be removed, and we'll find out in a minute, it's not immediately user accessible. You basically have to tear apart the whole entire computer to get there. So we'll see how long it takes. To pull off the main fan, that's obviously the first step, we've got four fan, or four screws, one here, one here, one here, and one here. Okay, so unless this fan is like the BA fans that used to be in Mac Pro, I'm assuming it is attached with a cable. So lift up gently, and yep, there it is. Um, it's a cable right there, which actually, awesome, looks surface mounted. So you just pull straight up and it pops right out. And this fan actually looks to be really, really good quality. It's metal construction, which is nice. And uh, look at that huge gold bearing right there. Okay, so the fan's out of the way, but unfortunately we cannot access the RAM yet because it's still blocked over here in the corner. So it's immediately noticeable that while it looks like you can replace the RAM, Apple really doesn't want you to. And so what we're going to have to do to access the RAM and the CPU um, is actually remove the motherboard from the case. Now you might be wondering, how do you get this huge square motherboard out of this little circle hole? And well, you don't, um, <laughs> it's the short of it. Um, there are two massive screws right here, which I am guessing holds the motherboard into, holy smokes, those are tight, uh, into the top of the case. These are Torx T10 screws. We've got one, we've got two, and if my suspicions are correct, those are the only two. So the motherboard should be pretty loose. And yep, look at that. So the motherboard is, is loose. Now the question is, how do we actually get it out of here? Well, you can tell that the back of the uh, Mac mini is plastic. And that's because there are actually a bunch of plastic retention clips that hold the motherboard in and the motherboard can actually slide out. Now you're also wondering, well, how in the heck uh, do I undo those retention clips because the gaps in here are so tight? Well, there are two things we need to do first. One is that, as far as I can tell, yep, there are only two ribbon cables. Well, they're not even ribbon cables. There's one surface mounted cable right here, and then there's the power supply cable. We need to detach these before we try and rip the motherboard out, otherwise we can cause damage to the cables. This one comes up very, very easily. Um, you just pull up on it. We could actually probably even do it with our fingers, and yep. And then we've got our power cable right here, but we can't really remove it gracefully yet because the top of the case right here is in the way. So that's all right. There used to be a special tool uh, to remove the Mac mini motherboard from the case. Uh, it was like a little metal hanger that would sit on the two sides and pry it out. You can actually see a hole right here and that hole we need to access um, so that we can kind of push the motherboard forward and undo the clips. However, I don't see another hole on the other side, which is a little worrying. Um, but I'm just gonna try and pry this one first. And literally all you do is you just basically put your screwdriver in the hole and then push it out. And you can see that actually jotted the front, uh, jotted the motherboard out of the way and jumped the plastic out right here. So now there's a gap in the plastic, the motherboard's slightly askew and uh, we're done over here. Unfortunately, I do not see that same hole on the other side. So what I'm gonna do is probably not kosher. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I was gonna say, I'm gonna push straight on the cooling assembly and there you go. It kind of just slides out the front of it. Now again, we do need to be careful. That power cable is still attached. So let's drag it back a little bit and then pull that cable out. But now, assuming carefully just to make sure, yep, everything slides out. So, There you go, easy as that. Now that the main logic board is out, all that's left is the power supply. I wanna show you how to remove this because while it probably isn't going to happen, it's possible that, um, that you may have to replace this in the future. And uh, it should be relatively easy. There's only one, two, and yep, there's a third screw right there. This one is a pretty small hole, so you're gonna to have to get a screwdriver that can fit down in there. Luckily the iFixit one does. And there we go. And this should just slide out. Mm, or not. Oh, okay. So this is interesting. The little power connector, we have to pull off the little silver uh, bracket that goes around it. And then if you can see there, there's a little tiny, um, basically retention clip. If you slide that clip out with a screwdriver, you should be able to just twist that power connector. And yep, 
There we go. So the cool thing about this is that it's actually um, a sealed off self-contained unit. So it's very, very safe. Um, obviously, you don't want to go jamming your fingers down inside there. But as opposed to the iMac where the uh, PSU is totally exposed and, and quite dangerous, this is all sealed off and self-contained. So that's really nice to see. Good job, Apple. Okay, and now to the good stuff. I know you're excited about the RAM. So we've got four screws right here holding this panel in place. And that is a very small screw head. I'm guessing Torx 4 maybe? Yes! Okay, now this weird shield should just slide off diagonally, and that it does. I honestly don't know why this is there and what it is for. I guess it's to protect the RAM when you're sliding the motherboard in and out of the case. I don't know, but cool. And um, you've got a little rubber gasket on the side that you have to remove too. Oh, actually, no, that is strange. Holy weirdness. Okay, so that is not only a little rubber sleeve, but that's actually the RAM retention clips. So as soon as you pull those, the RAM releases, that is an odd design, and the dims, yep, just as expected, come out super easy. So there you go. Uh, this base configuration has two sticks of four gigabyte DDR4. So yeah, you can replace your own RAM, although I'm not going to give Apple kudos. I am glad that they kept using SODIMS rather than soldered memory. It is repairable, it is upgradable, but at the same time, it feels like they purposely made it difficult to do. I mean, that is not easy. It's not hard. If you're familiar with computers, you can probably do it in half an hour, but at the same time, it's clearly designed to discourage users from trying to upgrade their own RAM, unlike Mac minis of years past. Um, the speaker, again, comes out very easily with a little surface-mounted connector. I don't know why there is a speaker. There is truly no need. It sounds awful, but there is a speaker in Mac Mini. And then let's remove this cooling assembly, which I'm guessing we have to remove these four screws holding the CPU uh, radiator into this little bracket on the front panel. And then we're, of course, going to need to remove the four screws that are tension screws on the die itself. So let's do that. We are going to, in theory, lift this. Nope. We've got, ah, two more screws holding this puppy on. Actually, I take that back. We have four more, two here and then two under here, hidden underneath these little rubber pads. I am no, uh, you know, engineer, but that seems a little excessive. Aha, yes, it does. So that slides right out and there you go. Hey, look at that. Apple actually used a reasonable amount of uh, thermal paste in one of their computers for once. That is just about the right amount. There's not too much, not too little. It is the weird thermal compound that they use, so it feels a little dried out. I'm assuming that uh, thermals could be improved by replacing it with your own thermal paste, but at the same time, you'll want to proceed at your own risk. So let me tell you about what's actually on the board here. The Mac Mini Logic Board is pretty dense and really cool. Obviously, you've got your RAM slots and you've obviously got your CPU and iGPU over here as well. Over here, you have your PCH, a platform controller hub. If you're familiar with the terms Northbridge, Southbridge, it's basically the modern version of that. So this handles um, the system clock. It also handles uh, the FDI, which is flexible display interface is what Intel uses for the integrated graphics to connect with the um, actual I.O. on the front of, on the back of the computer. And so these two kind of work in tandem. You've got your system battery over here, which is obviously pretty important uh, to maintain settings and uh, the system time and, and stuff like that. Um, over here, you've got your Wi-Fi antennas and you can see we removed one earlier. Remember that black little circle at the bottom of the case at the very beginning. There's actually two other ones. This one goes to the left side of the back of the IO, and this one goes to the right side. So Macs are very well known for having very good Wi-Fi, and that's part of the reason why. There are wires everywhere. Other than that, the only other interesting things of note are these two. So right here, we have our flash storage. So this is the base model, has 128 gigs. So each of these um, is 32 gigs a piece. So there are four little modules. If you get the two terabyte model, one of the reasons they're so expensive is they have to pack 512 gigs of density into each little square. Um, so it's quite a bit cheaper when you get 128 gigs, obviously. And then under here, this is the last cool thing, you've got your T2 chip, which handles boot security and it handles uh, the SSD, which makes it so quick. 
And uh, that's a staple, I'm assuming, on all future Macs from here on out. So, what did we learn about the 2018 Mac Mini? Well, like the 2014 model, Mac Mini this year still remains the easiest computer to disassemble in Apple's lineup. It's pretty easy to take apart. Unfortunately, there isn't much you can change out or upgrade. The CPU, just as the previous generation, is soldered directly to the logic board. It is not socketed, you cannot upgrade it or replace it. Same with the flash storage. Now, the previous generation had a spinning hard drive. You could upgrade it to a SATA SSD. Now, the new PCIe SSD is arguably much better in every way than the SATA SSD in terms of performance, but it is soldered directly to the board, unlike some of Apple's other products, iMac Pro and iMac specifically, which have keyed SSDs. They're still proprietary, but they are removable. Last, but certainly not least, and it is an improvement over the previous generation, which had soldered RAM, RAM in this generation is replaceable. The SODIMs can be swapped out. However, they are pretty hard to access, but it's good to know that if you're willing to do so, you can get RAM less expensive than buying it directly from Apple or buy the configuration you want now and upgrade later down the line for a lesser cost. That said, if you really want to get an, uh, a Mac product that is serviceable with a socketed CPU, removable RAM, and replaceable SSDs, you probably ought to look at the iMac line. That's really your only option. Well, folks, that's all from me. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for the new exciting product videos we have over the next few days. MacBook Air, MacBook Mini Benchmarking, of course, iPad Pro. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, stay snazzy. I've lost you But I need you And you're off my radar now